Hi, I'm Semen Yakov. This presentation is entitled A Pitfall of the Transformer-Based Multi-Output Isolated DC to DC Converter. This work was done in collaboration with Oded and Evgeny of IRP System, Fnest Siona, Israel. So we are talking about a simple DC to DC converter, which is not PWM. It is a bit different and it is based on actually a transformer with no inductor except for using some of the leakage of the transformer. So what we have here is a oscillator and then this is a driver producing a plus minus drive to the transformer and then we have a number of output windings in this case four and each one has this uh, full wave rectifier with a capacitive filter and this will be the load. So here we have four outputs which are floating and independent and this will be very useful when you need say supply for a high side driver or maybe on a board that has both digital and power and you like to have a isolated power supply for each part. So this is really very useful and it's simple because uh, all you need is of course the input voltage is around say if it's a gate driver you need something like 12 volt you lose something in voltage drops so you get something like 11 volt at the output. It's not stabilized but this is like a transformer that is feeding a voltage to the output. It is kind of interesting that there is no inductor here, so it's not PWM and the charging of the output will be to the maximum. It's not like taking the average or like PWM in which you have like a duty cycle. And there is a dedicated chip here of uh, Maxim, actually it's analog devices now, and this dedicated uh, driver will drive a transformer like this. There are a number of companies who make these transformers and in this case it's a one-to-one -one, and with a number of outputs which are floating. Very simple, very simple to implement and indeed very useful. You can use of course any other driver that you wish. Here they are saying that the driver has to be 50% duty cycle. We'll talk about it. This is correct but even this driver does not produce exactly 50%. There is some tolerance here. I'll talk about it a little later because this is actually a major point in this configuration. So here is a LT Spice schematics for one of the channels. We have the drive plus minus 12 volt. This is now 100 kilohertz, duty cycle 50%. I have rise time and fall time of 200 nanoseconds, which is perhaps realistic. These are coupled and to make it actually realistic again, uh, the coupling coefficient is not 1, it's 0.95 because actually the inductance is needed here in the operation. We'll see it in a minute. We have the rectifier and then I'm showing a uh, 0.1 and a 10 microfarad output capacitor. And so this is the basic configuration. So how does it actually work? We have here excitation, voltage excitation at the primary. Now I'm showing here actually an equivalent circuit of a coupled inductor. This is actually a coupled inductor, this transformer or this. Actually the coupling inductor in the sense that the coupling coefficient is not one. So I'm showing here an equivalent circuit in which this is the magnetization and the leakage is now reflected to the secondary. Okay, so this represents the transformer, the practical transformer. So we have then a waveform here, a voltage square wave, which is of course reflected here. So we have a waveform here, rectified. So the voltage after rectification will look something like that and the output is slightly lower than that providing a difference here 
for the voltage drop on the inductor. And so if everything is symmetrical, everything is fine, we have here pulses which are of the same height and therefore the reflected current to beyond the diodes is a square wave current and ideally it should be of a average of zero. So I'm now going to run this schematics, this LT5 uh, simulation, and I'm going to look at the input current primarily. This is what I'm interested at this stage. Again, 100 kilohertz, 50%, the on is 5 microseconds, the off is 10 microseconds, and here is what I'm getting. So this, I see here the input, plus minus uh, 12 volt, and here I see the current of the primary. This is the current here, okay? And if I look at it, it doesn't look very good. First of all, there is a DC offset. Secondly, it doesn't look uh, symmetrical at all. And the reason is probably because I do not have a capacitor here, a DC blocking. Now, I have defined the duty cycle as five microsecond on and 10 microsecond of period. But the 200 nanosecond rise and fall time are not counted within this five microsecond. So the actual duty cycle is a bit higher. Okay, so if I look at here, this is five microsecond. So that the average here is a bit higher than five microsecond. And therefore it's a non-symmetrical wave. And therefore there is a DC component sufficient to generate a DC current, okay? So clearly, in the practical case, you do have to put a capacitor here to block the DC, okay? Because it will be extremely difficult to make this duty cycle to be exactly 50%, uh, and not to mention the fact that things are changing with temperature, aging, etc. So here, I've put here the capacitor, and I look again at the current, and in this case, the average is very low, okay? But it's non-symmetrical, okay? I would expect it to be sort of symmetrical, as I've said before, but it is not. It is not symmetrical. So why is this? To probe it further, I'm now running and looking at some other waveforms, okay? I'm looking at the waveform here at, I, at the secondary, and looking at the diode currents and the output, okay? So trying to figure out why is this waveform here non-symmetrical. And here is what I'm getting, okay? This is the output. It's pretty nice. I mean, there is some ripple here, but notice uh, we're talking about very high resolution here. Zooming here is very high. So this is a uh, few millivolts, okay? So this is okay, but I see here that the secondary current has also a DC component. This is zero, and you see that this is non-symmetrical, okay? I have a negative current of this magnitude, and then a positive current of this magnitude. And then I'm, I look at the diodes, the two diodes, this one and this one, I see that they carry different currents, okay? Here the peak is 81 milliamp, and here it's only 32. So it's certainly non-symmetrical. Obviously, this is a, the cause for this non-symmetrical uh, square wave, I mean, semi-square wave here. So why is this? So let's try to understand what is going on here. Now, if the duty cycle is not exactly 50%, and, and as we understand in our case, it's not exactly. Well, it, it's close, but not exactly. Then what we're going to have, we have to have an excitation which is asymmetrical. As you pass through this capacitor, this becomes asymmetrical in the sense that the DC component now is zero, while the area here and the area here are the same because through the 
capacitor, there is no DC current. So this now, this waveform, which is here, does not have a DC component. But it has different heights because of uh, the duty cycle, which is different from 0.5. Now, once this is rectified by this rectifier, after being transmitted to the secondary and then rectified, you get the pulses of different heights. And here we see them. Okay, this is the secondary voltage here. And this is the rectified or the absolute value of this voltage. And you see that these voltages here, these peaks, the maximum values are different for the reason that I've just explained. Therefore, this circuit now works more like a single diode rectifier, okay? Because obviously the capacitor will be charged to the higher value and here, save the drop, it is not supposed to conduct at all actually if the voltage will be much lower. So to probe into it a little bit farther, I'm leaving these values as they are on time 5 microsecond and this is 10 microsecond, but then I'm reducing very much the rise and fall time. So it will be like a perfect square wave, 1 nanosecond. So it is very close now to 50% duty cycle. And lo and behold, you see that everything is now okay. When the duty cycle is exactly 50%, the height is the same, the current of the two diodes is the same, the current of the secondary of the transformer is now symmetrical, plus minus, zero average, everything is fine. But clearly, it is very difficult to obtain 50% duty cycle all the time. To prove this point even farther, I've changed the duty cycle to 0.6. Here it is. This is now 6 microsecond and this is 10 microsecond. And indeed, we see now like a one diode rectification, okay? We see that one diode does not conduct at all and only the diode that is receiving the higher voltage is conducting and therefore IL2, this is the secondary of the transformer, is carrying now DC current. This is not good because if you have many outputs and it so happened that all of them will be asymmetrical and who knows if it will be cancelling each other, the worst case that they will be added, then you might have quite a bit of a DC current through the secondary which might actually drive the transformer into saturation. Okay, so let's see again what is really happening here. We are starting with a waveform which is non-symmetrical, duty cycle not equal to 0.5. We are going through a capacitor. Now there is no DC component, but the height are different. So when you rectify it, you get two pulses of different height. And now these two pulses are going into the output section with the leakage. And this lower voltage does not make any difference or is not involved now in the operation because it's too low and the voltage at the output is actually affected by the higher pulse. So we have only one of the diode pair conducting. This is not good. So what can be done? Well, what we can do exactly what we did here. If we put here a capacitor, this will definitely block the DC current here. So whatever will happen, there will be no DC current. Okay? So here I am adding a 10 microfarad capacitor, going back to the 6 microsecond on time, that is a duty cycle of 0.6, this is the bad situation, and see what happens here. Very nice, no problem. Indeed the waveform do not look exactly the same, but the DC of the secondary winding is obviously very low, it's a mic microamp here, just a simulation resolution, so it's very very low because there is a capacitor, no question about that, and therefore it sort of arranged itself such that the 
current through the diode will be symmetrical in the sense of area. That is, this area is equal to this area, and this is why we have an average of zero. Now notice that the scales are different, okay? So this is 64 and this is 32. Anyhow, clearly, what we see here is one of them sort of folded and we have this IL2 and we have here zero current, which means that the area of one side is equal to the area of the other. So this is very, very nice. So what is the conclusion here? I would recommend, first of all, to put a capacitor at the primary. This driver, here is the specification of this driver. This driver is specified to 50 to 51 49 percent of a duty cycle okay now 51 could already be harmful so even this driver which is kind of sort of top of the line is still not exactly 50 percent because this is not realistic okay so by putting here a capacitor you just get rid of the problem and it could be any duty cycle that you wish then I highly recommend to put capacitors here and this is to avoid the situation that when the duty cycle is not exactly 50% you'll have a DC current in the secondary and by having this capacitor you'll be blocking them. Now you really for operating this circuit you really do not need this uh, high class driver. Starting with an oscillator which could be like a 555 Having two drivers, say, inverting, so you'll get the inverted part and the non-inverting part. And this will be driving the primary. You like to have a MOSFET driver, so you are dealing with the RDS on of, say, 1 to 3 ohm. And that's it. That's, that's all that you need for driving this thing. You don't have to keep the frequency constant. You can go to fairly high frequency. This is another issue. I'm not going into the how to design uh, this circuit, but it is clear that you can go to 200, 300 kilohertz without any problem. Okay, so this is really a very neat circuit. And I think that by adding this capacitor, you make it fail safe and uh, very handy in many, many situations. And here is a measurement a oscilloscope measurement of a real driver like that. We see one output, of course. This is the drive, and as you can see, it is non-symmetrical. We've made it purposely non-symmetrical. It's about 60% duty cycle. And then we see the current of the secondary. There is a slight offset in the measurement because this is a probe of, uh, the current probe is for 10 amps and we are talking about milliamps, so there is some offset here, but you can see that things are very, very neat, very, very nice. Output has some noise here, but again, it's not optimized. This is just for demonstration, and everything works exceptionally nice. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest, and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.